So in this video, we are going to go through the basic procedures involved in an acid alcohol titration using an example of a neutralization reaction between HCl and sodium hydroxide. Our objective is to find out the concentration of sodium hydroxide solution using a standard hydrochloric acid solution. You can see 0.1 mol per dm cube. Now, I will divide the whole titration into four parts. So the first part is the cleaning part, where we have to clean our apparatus to be red, the pipette, the chemical glass, so that they do not contaminate it. The second part is the assemblage of apparatus. So how can we set up the titration uh, apparatus so that we are prepared for the titration? The third part is the actual titration where we will add our titrants into our analyte to find out how much volume of HCl is required to completely neutralize all the sodium hydroxide. And the last step will be the calculation part. Now the calculation part will be separated into another video. And so in this video, we are focusing on the cleaning part, the assemblage of apparatus, as well as the real titration. So let's get started. Now the general rule of thumb for cleaning is to wash all the apparatus using distilled water and then to rinse the apparatus for the solution that is going to be hold or transferred by that apparatus. So for example, a pipette, we are going to measure out 25 cm cubes of our unknown sodium hydroxide, right? So to clean this, first of all, I'm going to use distilled water to wash it, and then I'm going to rinse it with sodium hydroxide because I'm going to use the pipette to transfer sodium hydroxide. So this is the general rule, except for one apparatus, which is the conical glass, the conical glass. We only clean a conical glass with distilled water. This conical glass is going to contain the sodium hydroxide transferred by the pipette. We do not use sodium hydroxide to clean this one, despite the fact that this is going to uh, hold the sodium hydroxide. Because, if you think about it, our objective is to transfer 25 cm cubes of sodium hydroxide into here, accurately. Now, if you use sodium hydroxide to rinse this one, then there will be some lingering sodium hydroxide, and that will add to the total amount. So, the total amount is not only 25 cm cube from your pipette, but also add a several uh, drops, conical glass, we only rinse it with water, distilled water, right? So let's get started for the uh, rinsing part. First of all, we found ourselves a beaker, and then we would need to have some distilled water, just thoroughly, or actually roughly, rinse the solution a little bit, pour the distilled water out, and then put some high pestle connect them, and then we suck up the solution. Not need to, no need to add too much. Um, gently roll the pipette, so, and then we discard the solution. So this is the washing part. And then we are going to rinse it with the solution that is going to be uh, contained by this apparatus. In this case, sodium hydroxide. Find us a big cup. We will add our sodium hydroxide in just a little bit to rinse it and then pour away the washing and then we pour a certain amount of sodium hydroxide in. Now we, go, we are going to rinse it with sodium hydroxide. So again, we do these steps. Discard the solution. Now, in general, we are going to do the rinsing two to three times, but for time's sake, I'll only do it once. So the next thing will be the burette. So let's clean the burette. Again, we are going to use our distilled water. Make sure the valve is closed. Just pour some into it. So that will be the 
uh, washing part, and then we are going to uh, rinse it with the solution. So again, in this case, we are going to put in the hydrochloric acid. So we pour some of this hydrochloric acid down, just a little bit, give it a little rinse, discard the washing, pour a certain amount of HCl inside, and then now again remember you always take the burette down when you want to fill any liquids inside. So you add small amount of the hydrochloric acid we do the uh, rinsing Okay, so that finish off cleaning the burette and then for the conical flask, we only use distilled water to clean it. Okay, we have already cleaned out the pipette using the sodium hydroxide, using first of all distilled water followed by the sodium hydroxide solution. The burette first by distilled water and then rinse by hydrochloric acid, and then the conical flask simply by distilled water. Now let's move on to the next part, which is the assemble of apparatus. So first of all, we have our burette, we need to fill it up with our solutions. Remember to let go some of these to make sure that the lower part of the nozzle is filled with the solution. Make sure there is no bubble trap inside. Okay, now the conical flask, or the clean conical flask, we will put it right below the burette. Okay, and also we have to make sure there's a white tile down here. And then we are going to introduce 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide into the conical flask using our pipette of course. So make sure the liquid level the bottom of the meniscus just touching the graduation mark there you go and then just add into our conical flask now you may ask oh will the water remaining in the conical flask dilute the sample the answer is yes but the, but it doesn't matter because in a titration experiment what we are concerning about the content in the conical flask is its number of mole the amount of sodium hydroxide. So whether it is diluted or concentrated, it does not affect the result. That will always be 25 ml because it was measured by the pipette, right? So any water there, despite the fact that it has diluted the sample, but the number of mole sodium hydroxide is the same. The last step is to add a suitable acid base indicator. So in this case, we are going to add Phenolphthalein. Okay, don't add too much. One to two drops will be suffice. So as predicted, you can immediately see the red or purple color of the phenolphthalein because sodium hydroxide is an alkaline solution. So that will be the assemblage of apparatus. So. Now let's move on to the third 
part, which is the actual titration. Now, before we start, make sure that we record the initial reading of the burette. So you look at it from uh, horizontally, look at the bottom of the meniscus. So as you can see here, the initial burette reading should be around 1.3. So after we have recorded the initial reading, now it is time to do our titration. Now watch carefully about how we perform the titration. First of all, we will use our right hand, assume you're right-handed, to grab the neck of the conical glass. And the left hand, we will do it like this, okay? So basically, you have your thumb, index finger, and your middle finger, controlling the valve. So as you open the valve, the solution will get down, and then as you do it, you keep swallow your solution. So this is how you do a titration. So now I have already introduced around um, 15 ml. Now you can see this, the color have changed already. Now you have seen the indicator have changed its color. That means the endpoint has reached. Now at this point, you are going to check the final reading of the burette. So the final reading of the burette is twenty point seven. Now notice that it may be a chance that I have overshoot the titrant. Overshoot means I add too much, so it goes beyond the end point. That means I have add too much hydrochloric acid, so this is not accurate enough. But it is okay for the first trial, because the first trial we usually use it to have a ballpark value, as an estimated value of how much titrant is needed for titration. So we can repeat the experiment and having a approximate number in my head. So from the result, I kind of figure out is around 19 in cm cube. So when I do a second trial, I will have to pay attention when around let's say 16 to 17 ml of the titrant has been added. Then perhaps I should slow down and then I will add it slowly. So I'm going to undergo a second trial. So this time, I'm going to slow down when I have added around 15 ml of the titrant. So now 15 ml has already added. Now I will try to adjust the valve so that the solution is added in a dropwise manner. Drop by drop, okay? Okay, so now you can see the solution has turned clear in a dropwise manner. Now I will register the final volume again. This, this time is around 39.8. 39.8. So this is how you do a titration, and usually the titration should be repeated at least three times, and then you get the average result. So that's the end of this video. Thank you.